everybody, Eric here, and this is Biz Talk. And once again, we are uh, having another interview with a rabble rouser, my understanding. <laughs> and uh, Dominic Belafiore, right? Or Belfi Belfiore? Belfiore, you got Belfiore. it. Belfiore, okay. And Dominic uh, is, and he's, he's, he's going to make sure I say this right, <laughs> VP of Biz Small Business Relationships. Well, uh, Vice President Relationship Manager. There Vice President Relationship. I like my title better you for you. I like my real title for you, Senior <laughs> VP, but he won't let me say it. Well, we'll work it up. Um, and you're at uh, M&T Bank, yep. correct? Okay. And uh, you're also a veteran. Yes. Yes, All Marine right. Corps veteran. Marine Corps veteran. So we have um, somebody here that we value very much, for sure. Um, and uh, you're an absolute asset to the small business community. But before we jump into that... Um, Give us a little background. How did you get from there to here? Sure, sure. Uh, so yeah, like you said, I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I uh, got out of the service uh, end of 2005 and was trying to figure out what the next thing was, right? Um, went to school, got my undergrad, and was looking around and fell into defense contracting. So I actually worked for the government, though. So I was working for the Department of the Army and Department of Defense. Uh, and I was a contract specialist. So essentially I was a, a buyer for the Department of Defense. And we purchased everything from you know, routine landscaping services, IT stuff, construction, to stuff that we can't really talk about, um, which is kind of <laughs> cool. Um, Still under an NDA? <laughs> oh, a little bit more than NDA. <laughs> a little bit more than NDA. They're watching. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I those guys in the car outside. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, worked, worked in defense contracting for a while and did some cool things um, and found myself looking for the next step, right? Um, leveraged my background as a buyer to a role with the Small Business Administration. Okay. So I worked for the SBA, helping small businesses now understand how do you get involved in this government contracting thing, yeah. right? How do you do business with the government? Yeah. Um, Leverage that for a role kind of doing capacity building, right? So if you want to be ready to do business with the government, you've got to have your ducks in a row. Yeah. And that's a process. So how do we get folks ready even to do business with the government? Uh, so I did some capacity building with SBA uh, and then came over to M&T Bank to get a little more hands-on, right? SBA is a government gig. And so the government, you know, ties your hands in a lot of ways. Sure. So I wanted to be able to do more and help more. So I jumped over to M&T Bank, uh, was there for a few years. Uh, I don't know if you know, this is actually my second time around at M&T. Yes, I know it's your second time yeah. around. You were coming back. It was a big hush-hush thing <laughs> about right. it. That's Eric, right. don't, don't mention him yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I worked for M&T for a little while and loved what I did um, and then had an opportunity to go back into the government contracting world. Uh, served as the director of operations for a national professional association involved in contract management, uh, which was fun. Uh, but that ran its course, and it was time to get back to the local stuff again. Mm. And so a few months ago, I jumped back to M&T and hit the ground running. Nice. So M&T um, Bank, um, obviously, they have their consumer facing, they have their small business facing, corporate facing. Um, so you're in the small business space, yep. right? Okay. Yep. And um, so you're in northern New Jersey, Bergen County. Passaic County, that area? Bergen, Passaic, Hudson, Norris, okay. a little bit more. So are there people like you all over? Anywhere there's an M&T bank, are there regional people like you? So are uh, somebody who's in Delaware can reach out to a person in your position out in there? 100%, right? okay. yeah. So it's not just relegated to here, but we're talking about you right now. But um, so <clears throat> they're, they're very much, you're, you know, you're there because you are small business focused. Right. 
right? And that's why they want you. So tell us some of the things you do over there. You know, a lot of it is um, relationship building. You know, um, it's not, I'm not a transactional guy. I can be if you need me to be, but when it comes to who do I want to do business with, who do I want to work with and collaborate with, uh, it's, it's folks that value a relationship. So it's building relationships with business owners, right? What are you doing? What do you, what do you want to be doing with your business? How, how are you looking to get from where you are now to where you want to be in a year, three years, five years? So it's building those relationships um, directly with business owners, and it's building relationships with folks who are in the space. You mm -hmm. know, um, there are a lot of resources out there, you know, yeah. um, but folks don't, aren't aware of it. Right? Folks aren't aware that there's free resources, that there's low cost resources, not for profits, right? There's, there's folks all over the place. And so to be able to understand that and then function as that connector. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, you know, you're looking, listen, I work at a bank, so people think of financing. But I'm also having conversations with folks about their social media presence right. and say, all right, you need to talk to this person because they are the experts. Um, in small business marketing on social media right. or hey, how do I do you know online sales, right? Oh, you got to talk to this person So it, it's it's building relationships both with the folks that need it right now and the folks that I'm connecting other folks with All Right, so you yourself are the resource. Yeah, you know, you might be at a commercial bank but you are a resource and no cost resource to connecting to other valuable resources, right? Right, right and then that's that's why you're all the way down from Bergen County here today, <laughs> sitting with us because we're re relationship building. You know 100%. what I mean? Yeah. And then that's why we had you at procurement con. <laughs> that's why we're trying to drag your ass with us to everywhere else we're going. <laughs> there you go. Well, listen, there 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 are, you know, it's a matter of finding somebody that knows the ecosystem, but also somebody who's willing to share. Um, there are there are you know let's face it there there are greedy people out there who want it all to themselves. Yeah and um, don't play nice in the sandbox. And that's not who I do business with. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I think we're, we, you know, we're in that space now where it's helping each other is, is really how we're building business. You know, no small business is publicly traded. So they're not getting all this income from mm -hmm. stocks to keep operating and to just run everything on a cookie cutter system. They have to work together with each other. And whether it's you as an individual, having a, a cocktail somewhere, giving some advice, or you're at your office giving some advice, you're working with, and that makes you a resource. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit, um, I, I, I'd love to hear from you uh, a piece of advice that maybe you've seen other small businesses face that maybe is a recurring issue outside of the resources, <laughs> the lack thereof <laughs> or the knowledge thereof, but something that you have constantly or consistently so see through your career that we know is a regular thing for them. Maybe you have some advice you can throw out? On sure. I, I think the biggest challenge I've seen, especially when it comes to folks looking to, to take the next step, right, the next level of growth, is moving the mindset from that of a small business owner, which really becomes your personality at a certain point, but changing it from being a small business owner to being a CEO, right? From mm. being somebody who is the chief cook and bottle washer doing everything, hands in everything, to somebody who is operating at a different level to where they're aware of everything going on in their business, of course, but not necessarily doing it all themselves. You know, they've brought the right people on, they're delegating responsibility out, and they are able to then focus on the strategic instead of the day-to-day -day operational. Right, do you think that, because um, I, 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 I can understand that mindset. You're, because even right now, there's things I still do. Yeah. You know, a part of it I do is because I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Like I love certain things. There's some things I just don't want to touch. <laughs> You could ask Mark, Mark, how's the bank account? Mark, how's the account? Mark, is our insurance okay? You know what I mean? I'm always asking him because I just, I don't want nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I have, um, Mark, I can't write a sentence Mark, I can't write a sentence that's not run on. Check my punctual. We got a content writer now <laughs> to take that burden off of you. <laughs> um, but, you know, so I get that. I get there's a degree. And there's also a certain degree I had, it, it took, it was a struggle for me to let go mm -hmm. you know that was a struggle and that happened when I think when we brought on Kanani was I had a struggle with letting go of oversight on the email marketing was your baby right yeah 
come on. I get yeah. it, right? You know, and then now that I have Kanani, I'm like, oh my God, where is she? I need her. <laughs> if so, you know, it's like, let's put a Lloyd's of London friggin' insurance <laughs> policy on her. And so what do you think, though? Is, 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 it a, is it trust? Is it, a, is it a power struggle? Is it, is it habit? Like, where do you, what do you think? Is, is, what was that? Is it a personality trait? Like from your, and we get it, you're not a psychologist, so we're but, good. But yeah, it's all that, right? It, and it, and it, to different levels and different people, it's a little bit of everything. You know, it's a little bit of, I built this from day one and I got us to where we are and I know what's best for, for my company. And so I'm gonna make sure that it's all in line with what I want. Uh, so part of it's that, right? Part of it is, um, who is this person, right? I know myself better and I know what I want for the company better and the direction better. And so let's make sure that even though I told them what they need to be doing, that they're still doing it the way I want them to be doing it. Right. Right. So a little bit of it's control. Um, a little bit of it is just routine because again, you've done it all, right? You know the routine. And for a little bit of time there in the beginning, it's going to be more work, right? Delegating is supposed to take work off your plates, but in that initial ramp up, you're doing more work because you've got to teach, right? You've got to train. And most importantly, especially for the small business owner mindset, you want to train them to do things the way you want them to be doing it, right? Uh, and start developing that company culture. So, you know, who wants to put in the extra time? You know, it's, it's going to take me longer to get somebody up to speed, so I might as well do it myself. Um, but it's, it's, that's, that's not seeing the bigger picture of where that person starts to take things over more and starts to own your vision just as much as you are owning your vision and then becomes a, a force multiplier for what you're doing mm. and can just expand um, your ability to do more. Yeah. So <clears throat> let, let me ask you this too, because it just jumped into my head that I see a lot of times, because you're in banking and you work for a major bank, um, you see a lot of banks offer a lot of services mm. to support a small business. Um, you know, you'll have, they'll, they'll talk about financial planning for your small business. Um, they'll talk about, you know, helping you, I, I think I, I can't remember who it was, but I think I saw one where they were like, we'll help you write your business plan. A bank is helping me write <laughs> a business plan. So, I mean, do you, you know, and I, I think that's also another thing is that business owners don't realize what you offer, you know, and how you, you or your team actually become part of their business in that specific way. So. Give me an example of something that, because um, I think it fits right in, because it's a trust thing too, right? People are not sure, oh, this is my bank. You know what I mean? Right. So where do you fit in? How do you, how do you help people and give them a service or services beyond the relationship, beyond the pointing the finger? What, what, what are some resources that you guys have? Yeah, I think it is, it's very much dependent on who you're working with, um, both at a very individual level but also at an organizational level. You know, I was just, <laughs> earlier today, I just came from a meeting with a guy who um, got bounced around with a, another financial institution where the person that was working with him was local, then they were in Iowa, then they were in Ohio. And I think most recently <laughs> he got assigned somebody in Michigan to be his like point person, his, his relationship manager, uh, when really there was no relationship. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's a matter of finding uh, a, a, an organization that matches what you want, and then a person within that organization that fits the niche you're looking for. Listen, I, I, I've got uh, colleagues that are, are super involved in real estate. I've got colleagues that are super involved in manufacturing. You know, I, I work with, um, I work a lot with government contractors, obviously. Yeah. I work a lot with veteran-owned businesses, obviously. Um, so it's finding that person that understands what you want and um, is willing to sit down and say, okay, let's figure this out together. Um, you know, there's an old adage that you've got to have a, uh, was it a banker, an accountant, an insurance person, and a lawyer, right? Bail, I think, is the acronym, right? There's that old acronym that those are the folks you need kind of on your team. You've got to have bail. You've got to have bail. <laughs> got to have bail. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, we'll, the right person will align their expertise with what you're doing. Right. So I'll, I'll sit down and, and I've worked with folks on developing a, a capture strategy for federal contracts because that's my space. I know it because right? you know it. Right. Um, yeah, that's huge. And, and, and I think, you know, that's why one of the things because our brand is um, procurement con is sort of the big 
government contracting space and then our biz cons are the smaller localized business development spaces and um, you know when we started that when we started really developing that idea it was really because when we started doing the government contracting we were blind men walking Ooh. around in the dark yeah you know we just didn't know what was out there we didn't know about resources you know it was just it was a nightmare and I remember when we wrote, when we, we, I said to Mark, oh, let's go after this NASA contract. <laughs> I was not prepared. It wasn't just, we had been writing state, county, um, you know, bids and winning these, these contracts and university contracts and state university. And we've been, we were doing all of this stuff. That gets you a step by step a little bit we're, into it. Right. And then we saw this opportunity that fit in our, at our time, because the company Black Inc. is a really creative strategies company, marketing company. Um, we saw an opportunity in the NASA and I'm like, this is great. And then, NASA no, it was NASA. That was NASA. I didn't bid the MDA. <laughs> I was like, whoa, this is way out of our, <laughs> and I'm just, I wasn't prepared for the bid the way they handled it. Because every time there was a change, we had to rewrite the, we had yep. to rewrite, we had to rewrite. And then when we finally got in and we were denied, you know, we weren't chosen to ask for the debrief and they were pretty clear, you weren't prepared. That was like literally wow. what they said. Yeah. You weren't prepared. And I was just like, uh, yeah, you're right. That's huge feedback though. It is huge feedback because we weren't prepared for all the paperwork. We weren't prepared for any of that. And I think a lot of small businesses don't realize that government contracting is at every tier of the way. Right. There's local, the town village, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? To the city, to the, to the county, to the regions and the states. There's just, and that's a, there's a lot of available work there. Um, and so I guess that's where you come in. You know, you can help them create that strategy. Sure. Right? From there, and you can then can direct them towards the resources like the uh, Apex Accelerators and the mm -hmm. uh, NJSBDCs. So um, let me hit you up for another piece of advice because I like the advice. Um, what do you want to give it? I mean, I'll, I'll let you, you throw out there something you think is really valuable and vital to people uh, in small business spaces. You know, I think realizing you don't have to go at it alone, right? I know, and again, I, I work with a lot of veteran-owned businesses, uh, and, and within the veteran community, there's this mindset of, I'm just going to put my head down, I'm going to push through it, I'm going to get through this, and, and we'll be good right and and forget everybody else right I'll, I'll just figure it out myself um and i think a lot of business owners get where they're where they are because of that right because they're willing to put their head True down grit, yeah. do the work put you know push through it and and do it um but you're not really making use of all the resources you have available um uh, even if it's just to bounce an idea off of somebody no uh, so i think just recognizing you don't have to go at it alone um is big and recognizing that not every resource is the same which means not every resource might be for you. Oh, that's a good way to put it. I never even thought of that. Yeah, from, yeah. from, from the free resources, um, there's a ton out there. You know, just because you are you know, working with a, a no-cost counselor at XYZ organization doesn't mean that they're the right fit for you. Right. So try a different one. Right. right? Bounce around, see, see where it makes sense for you to build the relationship with. Um, from, from counseling to banking to accounting, Right, you are, you are in control of those relationships. And if it's not working for you, find one that is. Yeah, so let's jump on that for a minute with the veterans because I feel like in conversations I've had over the years, um, a lot of veterans don't even realize, probably I almost feel like more so than a lot of small business people, maybe it's just the people I've spoken to, um, they don't realize what's out there for them. Right. Like the, the veterans resources alone. I mean, I know like in VA, they only go to veteran owned businesses. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? VA has a preference for veteran owned businesses. Um, it's, it's a huge opportunity. Um, there, are, there are veteran uh, business outreach centers throughout the country that, that specifically work with veteran business owners. Yeah, VBOX, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yep. we, for us, we have Amy Amoroso. Yep, huge resource, right? phenomenal. Huge, yep. Yep, we have her coming down to uh, BizCon, as a matter of fact. Nice. It's going to be there. And uh, Kathy Caruso mm -hmm. over at McNulty. Yep, so those are just two names, and I know they cover our region, yep. uh, and you know them. Um, and they're huge resources. So, uh, yeah, but again, so for example, if somebody walk, if a veteran wanted to walk into your bank, you know, and wanted to start a business, you're that point person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's talk it through. Talk. You're going to talk it through with them. You're going to see what their paperwork is, get all their necessary documents, DD-214s and whatever other 
paperwork they need to have in order for them to hopefully find the right path that you're the guy they talk to yeah listen i'm 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 i welcome those conversations i want those conversations right and it's everyone from the hey i got an idea what, what do i need to do to, to start a business around this idea to listen i've, I've been in business for you know a dozen years and we're, we're flatlining how, how do i get growth out of this business um let's talk through it let's let's realize what's going on let's see what resources are out there and let's make it happen okay so dominic belfiore right i got it okay uh vp business relationships at m t bank has just imparted some phenomenal wisdom on you uh veterans uh if you are interested in starting a business you're not sure maybe you want to make blue widgets maybe you are security experts doesn't matter this is the gentleman you want to talk to if you're local here in jersey um if you're in another state check out uh banks uh or your vbox center or even start a, your veterans administration yep. it's a great place to start um but yeah so thank you very much for being here we look forward to seeing you at our live event. There we go. And um, we're out. <laughs>